Hey guys, King Gath here with Bethesda Mod School. This is not a lesson. This is something I'm calling a fundamentals video. For those of you who have been uh, looking at my other fundamentals videos, check down below in the comments. There will be a timestamp. You can jump to the actual content of this that covers what this is. Otherwise, this is just going to be an introduction. So the actual meat of what I'm talking about that's probably listed in the title uh, will be a little bit further in the video. So for those of you guys who watch all of my mod school, this section is for you because you're probably wondering what this new fundamentals section is. Uh, many of you will figure it out just from context clues. Others are just curious and are going to stick around. So the idea with this fundamentals section is to create a sort of glossary of terms where I go over the knowledge I have about that particular term regulating the creation engine. So it could be discussing how things work in the creation engine, some high level concept. Um, in this particular one, we're gonna just talk about plugins, which I think most anybody who's been following my series, you already know this, but at some point, somebody's gonna be starting modding and they're not gonna have that. They're gonna know that they can download mods and they're interested in making them, but they're not gonna understand the concept of the plugin file. And so like these are the type of fundamental mental concepts that I want to make sure that people have the ability to find and learn. Now, this one is incredibly rudimentary. The next one, which will be forms and object references, I think there will be useful information even for people who have modded for a long time. Some, some maybe just a new way to think about something that'll help them advance a little further in their mod creation in the future. And that ultimately is the goal of this because one of the mistakes that I see done by schooling time and time again in everything I've ever tried to learn is they tend to always start with some fundamentals. And it makes sense if you were trying to think about how to teach somebody something you knew, you would try and go to the lowest level thing. And you know, when you think about, you know, when you're a kid and you're learning, you're learning things like the alphabet and numbers so that you can build on those to get to words and math and etc. The problem with that as an adult or as a, as a thinking person is that you're going to fall asleep most of the time. There are some people who learn fine this way, but I think the people that learn fine that way also can learn just fine through reading and then you don't need this stuff either um, but I find that the most important time to learn fundamentals is after you are engaged in the topic and you are trying to advance your knowledge further then that is when going back and learning the fundamentals you have some actual experience to draw from so that you can make those connections and it makes sense as opposed to just in a vacuum where it's hard to know which words the person is speaking or that words that you're reading that you're supposed to hold on to you don't know what the keywords are yet so if you have some experience already, then lessons on fundamentals, they have something that you can make connections and you can make sure that that stays in your mind and it will clarify things further for you. In fact, I often find myself in any of the fields that I'm in that I will be going back and looking up fundamentals frequently just to see if there's some new thing that I hadn't considered before um, because I learned about it before I was fully knowledgeable in the topic. And so this stuff, I think outside of this very first lesson or this very first fundamental video, I think there's going to be stuff to learn for even the most seasoned of modder. If nothing else, hearing from, from a different modder's perspective on how they grasp this particular, those particular fundamentals is that there might be something just in the way that I look at things that you don't look at them that, in that way. And in the same vein, I think that's for you experienced models, you're going to have stuff to teach me, or you're going to have your own way to look at it. That will be useful and interesting to me or somebody else. And so I would encourage anybody watching these fundamentals videos. If you have your own perspective on it, or if you think I got something wrong to comment below with that, I love reading comments. I love engaging on these topics. Um, and if you guys have, in addition to that, if you have any fundamentals videos ideas for, for things, once you see a few of these and you understand what I'm getting at um, that you would like to see me cover, I'm happy to do these. These are going to be really quick for me to make where I could just toss them in addition to my regular weekly tutorial lessons as I could toss in a fundamental video or two as well. So um, it, once you see a few examples, I think it'll give you an idea what I'm going for. But uh, I, I look at these as kind of we're creating that glossary of terms with a little bit more depth to them. So it kind of people could have like a wiki entry from me on a particular topic that they could search for specifically. These are not meant to be digested one after the other. These are kind of like a, you know, as you stumble upon or you hear me saying a phrase over and over again that you don't fully grasp and you want to grasp it, you'll be able to come to these videos to get that. And this will allow me to not get bogged down too much in that sort of thing. And I find that a lot of these fundamentals, I am finding myself going in and explaining it. I'm still probably going to do that, but I don't want to be like, we have to tell people in the future, hey, to understand, you know, linked references, go 
watch my questing 109 tutorial and my AI packages 107. You know, I don't want to have to people to learn, pick up all these little bits and pieces by watching these giant collection of, uh, of lessons because for a lot of people, they're going to have a mod in their head. They're going to show up and they're going to want to watch as few videos as possible to get that mod into the world because that's what's going to keep them engaged and excited. And so I want these these glossary, these fundamentals videos to be available for people to look up and learn more once they're ready, once they have the basic concepts, but they want a little more understanding so they can graduate beyond just copying what I'm showing them how to do and get into actually creating their own things. And I think some of these fundamentals plus those real world examples or those real game examples to tie their mind to, I think is the is going to be the perfect formula to get there. So Tutorial stuff mostly out of the way. There's one more thing I want to talk about in regard to this fundamentals. If you are a good learner from reading, um, you can learn this stuff online. And the best resource for that is going to be the creationkit.com. But in particular, you're going to want to go to the Skyrim section. So at the time I'm recording this, it's May 2020. Uh, by the time you're watching this, there might be more creation kit stuff for, for other games, you know, for uh, Fallout 76 or Starfield. We know uh, we know for a fact uh, 76 is using the creation engine and that uh, they've announced Starfield is. We don't know about Elder Scrolls 6, etc. But anyway, the point is, is that with each game, Bethesda has shown us that they do a little bit less documentation. And Skyrim has literally the largest modding community of any game, I think. And I might be wrong on that. There might be, uh, it might be perhaps it's uh, uh, Minecraft or... Um, or Sims or something, but as far as I know, Skyrim has the biggest modding scene, and uh, its creation kit, the creation kit wiki section for Skyrim, is really detailed, especially on these fundamental things. For example, you can look up different form types that uh, you see in the uh, creation kit, and it will have a, a pretty good amount of information about how you use them. So that is a very good resource. Whereas if you go to the same section in the Fallout 4, it'll either say the page hasn't been created, or it's just nothing there. Fallout 4's section of the, of the creation kit.com wiki is great. Great for learning scripting stuff. There's a lot of information on Papyrus. That's about it. There's very little information other than that. So um, keep that in mind no matter what game you're on since the creation engine is going to be with us for another 10 years. If you uh, if you are looking for fundamental information in text form, you don't want to have to wait for or you find my, my uh, style of delivery of information is too slow or, or meandering, definitely head to creationkit.com. Go to the Skyrim section. Look up that term there. You'll probably find out that information really quick. Okay, let's get into the very first. This is the most fundamental thing I could think of, and I dreamt up some some uh, people who wouldn't know this stuff already, and so I thought that it was important that I cover it, and I put it in this uh, this in this particular video, knowing that there's only a handful of people that actually need this, and uh, but it's there then at least, but mostly then this was just the introduction video, um, and that is what exactly is a plugin file. And what is inside of it? What does it do? And the differentiate and the differentiation between a plugin and a master file, because I think some of these are concepts we take for granted as mod authors. But somebody who has played mods for a long time, especially using just the Bethesda launcher or just using a Vortex without ever going into the the plugin section, they might have no concept of this whatsoever, but might still be excited about modding. This is where you go to learn this. So the plugin file is basically takes the information required to tie together all the different game assets into the game itself. So you might have assumed that that was the uh, the EXE that did that, the actual game, the game uh, engine, like the, the file that you run to launch into the game. Uh, but that is just a shell. It actually gets most of its data, how the assets are all tied together from a plugin file. Now, the core plugin the game runs on is called Fallout4.esm. And what's very interesting is when you start creating your own mods, they are going to be plugin files and they are effectively built on the same the same format and mechanics as that the base game one is. So this Fallout4.esm, you can have all the same sorts of data in your mod file. In fact, you could literally, if you had the uh, un crazy amount of time, you could rebuild Fallout4.esm in its entirety in the creation kit uh, yourself. It would be, I wouldn't recommend it. That would take you a long, long time to do manually, but it's it's theoretically possible to do. So 
even though a plugin sounds like it's a mod, in reality, even the base game itself is a plugin. Um, so anything, a plugin basically is a series of information that ties together different assets. It ties together uh, things like uh, models and textures and sound files and script files and how they all work together to create the game that you're playing. Now, there's some amount of this stuff that's actually stored in the EXE. It's very minimal. Most of that information is going to be available and loaded from these plugin files. Um, in particular, you're going to you're going to be looking at form information and forms are a very big topic that is very important. In fact, uh, the fundamentals video that got me down this road that really made me want to do this was the idea of explaining something called forms and object references, which are very, very important concepts to, to go further in Fallout 4 modding or in creation engine modding rather. Um, but I realized that if I start talking about forms, I've got to talk about plugins. And so hey, here we are talking about them right now. Uh, so plugins come in a, a variety of different forms. At the time of this recording, they come in three forms ESM, which stands for Elder Scrolls Master. That's not super relevant, but just in, I'm sure some of you are curious where that extension comes from. ESP, which stands for Elder Scrolls Plugin, and then ESL, which stands for e uh, Elder Scrolls Light Plugin. Now, the uh, Light Plugin is the newest type, and at the time you're watching this, there might be more types that have different extensions on them, but the basic way they work is all the same. And ESM is designed to be a master file that other plugins will reference or edit. So they might delete things from the master, they might edit things from the master, they might add things to the master, um, and those tend to be the things that are adding or editing tend to be plugin files. Um, a light plugin is virtually the same as a regular plugin, but the way it's loaded into the game is different, and it uses a little, basically they hacked their engine to allow for a ton of these. Um, without getting too much into what forms are, uh, basically a plugin can hold about 16 million records and you can have up to 255 plugins. So it's a ton of, of data that you can have. It's crazy amounts that you could create already. Uh, but once they released the Creation Club, they realized that a lot of people were already going to be playing at the max number of plugins, and they needed a way to extend that so that they would have a chance to sell Creation Club content to folks. And so they generated the Light plugin, which basically drops the max plugins available from 255 to 254, and then it breaks up that 16 million records available for that one extra mod and turns it into, you know, whatever that divided by, I think it's 4,000 now. So I think it makes it so that you can have something like 40,000 of these ESL files. Now, there are some limitations to that. Any of you guys who are hardcore mod users who use tons of them, you know that there are limitations also on the BA2 files, but we're not going to get into that. It's not important right now. Um, the idea, though, with the light plugins is that they are plugin files that have a cap on the number of records they can hold. They can only hold, I think it's 4,000 at this time. Um, so that is what the ESL is. And yes, most of you are going to be making either ESP or ESL mods. It's very rare you need to make an ESM mod. Generally, the people who need to make ESM mods are going to be people who are doing frameworks. So if you're expecting people are going to be building up on top of your stuff, those are the type of mods I love to make. Um, so workshop framework and uh, some settlements are the, the ones I'm known for that are basically much like uh, the, the master file of Fallout 4. They're designed for people to add uh, content to and so or to uh, use to enhance their content. That's just like with Fallout 4 when you're starting to mod, if you want to start adding things to the game world, if you want to add things to the Commonwealth, or you want to add things to Diamond City, um, you're going to be making a edits to this uh, master through your plugin. Now, uh, when I say edits, you, you don't necessarily have to. And this is a whole nother topic. I don't want to go too deep in the woods on that type of stuff. That's going to be, again, it's one of those things where uh, it's it's almost a fundamental video in itself of, uh, of edits versus additions and deletions. Um, but just know that your, your plugin file will be connected to, at bare minimum, fallout4.esm as a master because that represents the core of the game. That is the game world that holds all of those world spaces you're used to when you first turned on the game. Um, not the DLC locations, although those all do have master files as well. Um, but the the core of what you think about a Fallout 4, when you load into the game, when you start a new character uh, and you are in front of the mirror with your spouse and you get to set up your character, that is all in Fallout 4.esm. And everything that was in there at the launch of the game, all of that is in this ESM file. The art are all in these BA2 files, but the core of the information 
you know, the, uh, the how these models and textures and art interact with each other, what the numbers are behind things, you know, how much damage does a pipe pistol do, all of that is defined in this fallout4.esm plugin. And when you make your plugin files, you will be defining your own records and how they interact with art and sound in the world and how your numbers are set up to make things function. All of that is going to be stored in your plugin file. Um, there's another aspect to plugin files that's important to understand, and that is load order. Um, if you have not gotten into load order stuff yet, um, it's it's going to be, I'm going to explain it in the simplest way possible I can think of without getting into form IDs, which we'll get into when I talk about forms and object references in another one of these fundamentals. Um, but the load order, I'm sure you've heard talk, if you've played with mods, you've talked about sometimes mod authors will suggest when they're troubleshooting to move a mod somewhere else in your load order. Well, basically, when the game loads up, it's going to first load fallout4.esm as a plugin, then it's going to load the DLCs from the game, and then it's going to start loading in plugins, and this is where you have some control um, based on an order that you can in, that you can define. And often your mod manager handles this, so if you're using Vortex or Nexus or, or Mod Organizer, it generally handles this automatically for you. If you use Loot, it's going to sort that out for you based on community recommendations, and then ultimately you have final control over that. If you've never done that before, uh, you can also actually do it from in the game's mod menu. If you go to mods, log into Bethesda.net, there's a one of your buttons on screen, one of the button prompts will say load order, and you can actually sort things. And the reason for this is that the game evaluates different information based on the last plugin that edits a particular record. So if you have a bunch of different plugins that all are messing with the same thing, so say you have a bunch of different plugins that alter the damage of the 10 millimeter pistol, the final entry, the very final plugin that's loaded, is the ones. It's the one that will be used. And so this is how the creation engine is able to work with all these different plugins. Is that it basically just looks at, puts everything in an order, and the very last entry for any particular form is the one that gets used. So uh, that is why load order is important. It is represented by a two-digit hexadecimal number. So the, uh, hexad if you don't know if hexadecimal is. Uh, it's zero through nine and then A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, so it's a 16 digit way to represent a number. Uh, I'm, it's not really that important that you understand it. You just know that you're going to see letters occasionally in there. Um, but for all intensive purposes, just think about it as a digit that happens to be able to have a letter in its place. Um, the form IDs, again, now I'm trying not to get into this top to a topic that you're going to learn in the uh, next video, um, too much to muddle things, but, uh, the, that two digit is the start of a form ID and uh, it is the load order and it basically tells the game what order to to load up or what load what order your plugins are loaded so they can handle uh, things like uh, the edits where there's multiple to the same thing. But uh, that load order ID, that that uh, two number index, becomes super relevant as you're modding, um, because when you're doing testing and things like that, you're often going to run into it, and there's going to be points where you need to know it. So, just uh, pointing that out so you understand it, you can find it in your in your uh, in your mod manager. There's generally going to be a uh, plugins section, and there will be a column called load order. You can find this in all the different mod managers. Um, and uh, uh, again, all it's talking about is which plugin should load in what order, and this is how it, it resolves conflicts. That's the word I was looking for earlier. <laughs> That's how it resolves conflicts um, with multiple edits to the same thing. Okay, so I think that covers the basics of plugins. Again, this is, if you want to learn it in text format or you want to go over it more, I am I'm certain this is going to be on something like the uh, Creation Kit site. It's likely also discussed in various YouTube videos from other authors. So feel free if you still don't feel like you grasped what I told. If the, if my explanation was too muddled or didn't get into it and deep enough for you, search that term. You'll find more information on uh, on Creation Kit or Creation Engine plugins. Um, you can probably find somebody with a different explanation that clicks for you. All right, guys, watch out for more fundamentals videos. But again, don't feel obligated to watch through these. These are not designed to be digested like my typical lessons. These are designed for once you have some experience or uh, you're finding that um, you're just not quite grasping a particular glossary term, you can come here, you can hear my explanation. Um, in general, these are going to have a little more visual component with me doing things and showing you things, um, but they will at least give you an alternate way besides reading it to get this information.